Hi and welcome, my name is Anne and I usually do illustrations, digital art and even watercolor. However, I am currently working on a video game, a fantasy farming game and the art style is in traditional pixel art and sooner or later I am going to start making characters. However, even though I have illustration experience, I don't have any pixel art experience when it comes specifically to drawing portraits. So I figured it'd be fun and a unique exercise to turn myself into a pixel art character. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Alright, so the first step I had to do is to actually figure out what kind of pose and outfit I want to have. I didn't want to go too complex to not bite more than I can actually chew, since I really need to do some material studies and pixel art before doing any complex outfits. So I thought I'd be mostly wearing loose robes and painting clothes would be at least somewhat manageable. And since I did have some experience painting wooden trees, I figured I could use a wooden staff as it is something I could probably paint. And with my plan of action in mind, it was time to go ahead and open up Clip Studio Paint and start sketching my character in a pose holding a staff and wearing some mage robes. Since the game I mentioned earlier, Moonbell, is a fantasy game, I thought I might as well take the opportunity to prototype some outfit designs and pixel art material renderings. After I got my final sketch going, I imported it into Asprite, and that's where I had my first mistake. You see, our game is currently being developed on a 1080p resolution on a screen ratio of 16 by 9 and instead of testing what most people draw their portrait in to have them resize for multiple applications, I just used a size I figured would make sense for our screen size. I ended up getting about done with the faces line art only to think about how much pixels I have and how it will end up looking a lot more like illustration than pixel art in the end. So I went ahead and gathered some references, like I should have done in the beginning, and started browsing different pixel art portraits for both gathering references for drawing the actual character and rendering it in pixels, and also so I can find what kind of size I want for the character. Essentially what I did is find a pixel art portrait that I liked and I put it into Asprite, and then I looked at how big its original size is. Since whenever you usually export something from Asprite or any other pixel art software, you are pretty much doubling, tripling or even quadrupling its size to make it visible and easy to view. Meaning any pixel you see on the screen is actually 4 or 8 or even more pixels of the same shape. Sort of like zooming in, as long as it is in jumps of 100%, 200%, 300%, 400%, etc, it won't have any distortions of half pixels or other artifacts. So what I did is eventually take a portrait, reduce it to the point that a pixel is an actual pixel, and then from there I expanded it to fit a similar ratio of a canvas to fit my sketch, meaning it would keep the proportions I wanted while also looking a bit more pixelated. And then it was time to take those references I gathered and use them to make my own art, meaning finally drawing in the pixel art for my sketch. Now I ran into a multitude of issues when I was pixelating my character, but none of them were too horrendous, however the main thing I noticed is that the smaller resolution, the more each pixel has gravity. It makes sense, right? What I mean by that is for example, face A and face B are the same, but the only difference is about 10 pixels that have a slightly different shade and one looks much wider than the other. That is because a lot like makeup and contour, you are following the principle of bright means open and wide, while dark means smaller and closed. Using that shading methodology, all I had to do was shift certain pixels a shade or two darker, while I was anti-aliasing them so I get the result I was looking for. And then came one of my biggest problems with pixel art, the hair. Even at the moment I am not the most pleased with my results, but I noticed that in pixel art painting hair is a lot more important to plan in, due to your limited amount of space. From there I went down to the clothes and I tried multiple ways of shading techniques that are used in traditional pixel art, to try and mimic the texture of cloth with just a few pixels. You might notice in the hair the shading is rather linear, mostly blobs of paint. And in the dress and clothes, a lot of it is shaded with a certain grid best shading that is trying to mimic the rough fiber texture that cloths can have. That shading technique that I used to create the fabric texture is traditionally called dithering in pixel art. I have a slightly lensed view due to doing illustration, so I use different terminology at times. However, dithering is extremely important to convey materials in such a small resolution. 
There are a lot of different ways to do dithering, but unless the textures feels enhanced by it, I usually avoid doing it, so it's very difficult to animate with. After I got done with the clothes, I went ahead and finished the rest of the things like the staff and hands, and I have noticed that when I shrink down my sketch in Asprite, the proportions tend to be a little skewed, so I'll keep in mind for next time to have pixel sketch prior to rendering as well. And after it was all done with, I decided to go ahead and add a small animation. And ta-da! I made myself in pixel art. Hope you liked this video and you found it interesting as much as I had fun making it. And if you want to go ahead and follow our video game project Moonbell, please check out the link in the description below. And thank you for watching! Also, if you don't mind subscribing, that would be wonderful. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers so I can finally get myself monetized and hopefully be seen a bit more.